The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of the disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be? And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place. But the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. The Gospel of the Lord. Um, uh, you know me, and I've been here. Actually, uh, uh, this is going to tie in the lesson there. I, I've been here this November three years at St. Mark. Uh, I'm not just doing that to get applause, but thank you. <laughs> um, it does tie into our lesson today. We're going to talk about the Revised Common Lectionary today. We've talked about it a little bit before, and I'd like to talk about it a little bit again because it goes on a three-year cycle as well. So uh, it was kind of a good idea, I think, to... So, you know, sometimes I'm teach, and sometimes I'm preach, or sometimes it's teach and preach. Today's more teach. So get out your notepads and take some notes today. There'll be a test. There'll be a test. No, not like that. So the Rise Common Lectionary is a product, reminder, of a collaboration between several different denominational groups. Okay? It's how we set our readings each week in many, if not most, Lutheran churches, as well as m many traditional mainline and liturgically based American and Canadian Protestant denominations, such as Lutheran, Episcopalian, Presbyterian, Catholic, the lectionary is used by the majority of American and Canadian Christians um, and has also been widely adopted by Great, Br by Great Britain. The lectionary that sets our weekly readings then, as we have discussed before, connects us textually uh, and in many other ways with all these other Christians in this country and arguably in the world. In short, the lectionary is something we have in common with many Christians throughout the world. And that was our focus the last time we talked about the lectionary. Today, in context with the text that we have for today, I would like us to think a little more deeply about the revised common lectionary itself and notice a few things about it. So, something else then that the lectionary does besides connecting us with so many other Christians is that it helps us to get through reading a good portion of the Gospels and several other important parts of the Bible in a three-year period, okay? We call those years, it's a very complex term, we call them year A, year B, and year C. Year A, we cover mostly readings from Matthew. Year B, we cover mostly readings from Mark. Year C, we cover mostly readings from Luke. And the book of John is then sprinkled in those three years at different times. Now, here is how it's connected to our text today. The seasons of the church year reflect the life of Christ. Each church year is a reflection of the life of Christ that year. That means the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Christ, everything we find in the gospel about Jesus. The church year begins on the first Sunday of Advent, which is coming very soon, in the future, as they say. See, I caught that move from them. It's a good way to show. Okay. We are presently in year B, which is why we have been hearing so much 
about the Gospel of Mark for the last year. We will begin year C on December 2nd, the first Sunday of Advent. And for the next year, we will hear a lot from the Gospel of Luke. Next year, at this time, I won't spin around again because I get dizzy. Next year at this time, we will begin all over again with year A, and we'll hear from the Gospel of Matthew, our three-year cycle. Every church year, as we enter into the Advent season, and just a little before, we hear the apocalyptic scripture telling us of things to come, things that will be, that there will be signs. Our first reading today reveals there shall be a time of anguish such as never occurred since nations first came into existence. It's kind of scary sounding, isn't it? But by the end of the reading, we also hear, but at that time your people shall be delivered. Anyone who was found written in the book. And so there is this great promise that is also given, and this is true about much of the text, from the lectionary at this time of the year. It seems that there's always some description of things that will pass that often don't sound very good, but we are also always told that for those that are following God, those who are with Jesus, everything will always be okay, no matter what might occur. So we wait to hear about the good news of Jesus the Messiah coming into our Advent season. Jesus the Christ being born. And with the birth of Christ, we begin to hope for our own rebirth as we remember our baptism, dying to our old selves and being washed clean again in the waters of our baptism. That is good news. Now in this gospel text for today, there is Jesus and the disciples. And they are all sitting outside the temple, looking over at it. Although uh, the disciples are impressed by the place and the very stones that the temple had been constructed with. They say, look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Jesus has a different view of all this great construction. Jesus says, do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. All sounds a bit apocalyptic. But then Jesus also warns the disciples of those who will try to lead them astray and of other things that sound scary. But at the same time, he wants them to know that everything is as it should be. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place. But the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. But this is the beginning of the birth pains. Now there are many that want to hear the truth from Jesus and then try to make other people afraid of it. But what we hear today in this text is that Jesus wants us to know that we should not be afraid. Do not be alarmed. This must take place. And I think the lectionary tries to do that as well. Each year we are reminded of the promise of Christ, an infant that will save the world, and how others meet and follow Jesus in a way that we can begin to follow Jesus as well. Then on our Lenten journey, we walk with Jesus on the road that leads to the cross. We remember the suffering and death And Easter morning, we rejoice in the resurrection that is for all of us. And each year in our own lives, we experience difficult moments and signs of difficult things ahead. But Jesus continues to whisper to us through all of this, do not be alarmed. This must take place. And we are comforted by our deepening relationship with God in Christ Jesus and in those that God has placed in our midst. And so we pray. Good and gracious God, we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus. In Christ, 
Let us approach you, Lord God, with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Lord, help us hold fast to the confession of hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, encouraging one another as each day approaches. Amen.